Hi, my name is Masha I'm the Coding Blonde, and today we're talking about front end. This is video number three of my interview with Nick, who is an instructor at General Assembly here in Denver. If you want to watch the other two parts, there will be a link over here. And also, there's a playlist with all of my front end content. So make sure to check that out if you want to learn more. Today, Nick is going to give you some advice on where to start with front end and also give you some tips on how to approach job searching within the industry. Hi, Nick. Oh, hey, how's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thank you so much for answering more of my questions. So welcome. <laughs> Happy to be here. I'm very excited uh, for my audience to find out about where they can start um, in front end. So Definitely. where would you recommend someone who is new to front end um, to start? What should they learn? What should they focus on? Yeah. Kind of so uh, the three languages we've discussed here, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, start with HTML. It might feel overly simple, but that's fine. You want to get a general idea going down of what's going on. There's great sites like CodePin that allow you to type in the HTML, CSS, or JavaScript and just see the result live. Um, you can download something like Sublime Text and start working from there and then just making simple pages, dragging them to your browser and see how they look. So definitely start with HTML. Then CSS is gonna be your next logical choice because all you're doing is you're styling the different things that you are uh, building in HTML. This will get you into things like positioning. Uh, you'll hear some terms like the CSS box model, Flexbox, maybe CSS grid, some of the new things that are happening. Um, and you can start playing around with positioning, like changing colors and stuff is fairly simple, but when you actually are trying to build a layout in CSS, that's where it gets difficult. You can start picking up tools like Bootstrap, which is gonna make it move a little bit faster and make it easier to, for you to, uh, basically you're playing with Legos instead of just like sand sculptures. You have like something to kind of stick onto it. So it's a great learning tool. From there, you wanna move on to JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Now, JavaScript is where the learning curve goes up immensely. And this is where I tend to see uh, people drop off. Mm -hmm. Most of my students that I end up teaching web development to, when I ask them about what they did, they'll say, oh, I was playing around or taking some online courses and then I got to JavaScript and I got frustrated. Mm -hmm. The fact is, is this is going to require more effort on your part or some sort of outside instruction or just an incredible amount of uh, determination and interest uh, and dedication to it. Uh, this is where most people drop off. but. As you work your way through JavaScript, which is a very slow, arduous task, you will start to really truly understand the basics of programming, of data types, of sorting through arrays, of writing basic functions and if-thens, things like that. And those are the parts that are really hard about programming. It's so conditional. But starting there, and maybe even with a language like jQuery, which is a mm -hmm. tool set built off of JavaScript, it's basically like just shorthand. Um, starting there can be a great way to start building things. When I teach uh, designers, I have a few days that I get to teach them some development. And what I always do is have them build just a native HTML, CSS, JavaScript page. Mm -hmm. And then we add Bootstrap and jQuery with it. Mm -hmm. And we start playing around with it. And a lot of them lead, leave with a sort of sandbox where they can be playing with Bootstrap and jQuery all within this one area. And then I would say just do some side projects. Obviously, if you really want to dive just like fully into this 100%, uh, take a class. Um, that extra motivation of someone saying, you paid money to be here and you're going to fail if you don't do this, that really helps people get over the gap. If not that, find some fun test projects that you can just play around with. Make a website for your cat. Uh, just make a, a list of your favorite albums and just put it out in HTML, CSS. Doesn't have to be things anybody would ever want to look at, but start to get comfortable with it and experiment. The only thing that's going to get you to a point where you are a good front end developer is time and effort. You just have to keep working through it and you will eventually get there. Hmm. Yeah, actually I've um, heard about a lot of people trying to practice by copying the Facebook front page or something yes, like that. Yes, absolutely. Just, you know, pages that already exist and just getting your project there. That's probably yeah. one of the best ways. Absolutely. And um, in pretty much any browser, if you like command S and save it, it pulls mm -hmm. down the HTML, the CSS and the JavaScript. We have things like the Chrome developer tools that you can open up and inspect 
what's going on there, pull it down and try and break it apart. Now this is gonna feel weird because it's splitting our restaurant in half and like what you're getting is only the dining room and not any of the things that are making it work, but you can start to see how they structure their pages and why it looks the way that it does. So when you're learning Bootstrap, I advise people to download free Bootstrap templates and mm -hmm. just look at them, tear them apart, break them, make a copy, start over, and just keep working through it until you start to understand how the guts of it function. And you mentioned Bootstrap before and you just yeah. mentioned it again. Um, could you explain what it is? Because maybe somebody yeah. in the audience doesn't really understand what it is. Definitely. Uh, Bootstrap is a CSS framework. It's essentially a library. Uh, and uh, when I say library, I mean this very, like an analog library. It's these tools that are sitting there and you can go in and check them out one at a time and pull them into your project. So basically, um, coming from UX, we have Brad Frost's Atomic Design, which is his idea of breaking down pieces into little components, mm -hmm. um, starting with you know, atoms, molecules, organisms. I could talk for a long time about that. I won't divert too long. Um, but Bootstrap basically takes this idea of atomic design of making individual pieces one at a time, components, putting them together, mm -hmm. and allows you to extrapolate that even further. So Bootstrap, probably its biggest contribution to web design has been its 12 column grid, in which you are able to make rows, and then as you go down, say how many columns go in that each row. And mm -hmm. so it's sort of like a paint by numbers or like a Tetris layout for a website. So rather than like floating and shifting and positioning things and hoping that they end up in the right spot and then you know dragging the screen smaller and they all overlap, it makes a sort of like Excel table grid where mm -hmm. everything compresses and resizes as you squish it. So it takes a lot of, it's basically like training wheels for CSS that allow you to um, squish it down and make it larger. They also have a lot of utility classes, so you like put the class shout on something and it makes everything uppercase. Mm -hmm. So there's all these little nice tools that you can go and grab from it and work it into your website. It's great for prototyping, for rapidly putting something together, and a lot of agencies have their own sort of version of it that they put into all their websites just so you're not writing the same things from scratch every time you start a new website. Fair enough. So these are kind of these little styling shortcuts. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. And what are some of the resources that you would recommend for someone who is starting to learn all of these languages? Maybe, you know how during our UX interview, yeah. you mentioned that resource where people would get daily projects yes. and stuff like that. So anything that you would recommend for someone. Absolutely. Um, to starting. Um, there's lots of online coding classes. Uh, there's uh, like Code Academy. It's gonna be very abstract and you're not gonna feel like you're making anything, but mm -hmm. it's gonna teach you some of the basic principles, which can be good. Um, obviously there's courses like a General Assembly where you guys can come hang out for a few weeks and we'll get you up to speed. Um, but uh, on a larger scale, once you get past those basic ideas, the best thing you can do is have uh, a few just blank HTML pages where you're practicing. There's great resources online like the W3C. Uh, the W3C school will come up almost anytime you're Googling some piece of CSS or HTML terminology. The MDN, the Mozilla Developer Network, mm -hmm. that has a lot of lists of different things and discussions. And then of course, every developer's best friend, Stack Overflow, uh, where when you ask a question, why does PHP do this thing? it's gonna come up, the first thing's gonna be Stack Overflow. I always emphasize to my new devs that it's important they understand they will not be able to memorize everything. I don't have every HTML tag memorized or every CSS uh, call memorized. Uh, what I do know is that there's a CSS rule that puts a drop shadow on something. Mm -hmm. And I always end up writing shadow and then it doesn't work and then I Google and I'm like, oh, it's box dash shadow. That's what gives you the shadow um, every time. So you're gonna find things like that. You're not gonna memorize all the JavaScript methods, but start to accumulate some resources. Look at those, use those as a starting place, uh, and read the documentation. Get into the mode where you know something pops up on your phone and you're like, ah, it's an error, I don't care, and you close it out immediately. Start being the person that reads those and tries mm -hmm. to understand what that means. Uh, why am I getting errors in my console? Why is the page doing this when it squishes? And basically just experiment through there. Fair enough, that's, that's amazing. It's true that there's so many different resources out yeah. there, um, and just the amount of these you know, amazing academies is growing, and yeah. General Assembly is one yeah. of the great examples, spreading all over the world. Yeah. And once somebody has uh, done one of these courses, let's say, they've practiced and yeah. all that stuff, and they feel like they're ready to go out there and you know find a job, 
Yeah. Where would you recommend looking um, and do they need a portfolio, all that stuff? Yeah. Like, like how should they go about it? Yeah, well, you're going to need a resume and a portfolio. A portfolio being you need an online hosted website that showcases your work. Um, when I was hiring developers and designers, I needed some place I could go and look at the work they'd done where they have explained to me what they did, they have some photos of it, or links to live websites or downloadable annotated files where I can understand what they did. That's essential. I need to see what work you've done. And this is much more a skills-based industry than a you know history or seniority-based one. Um, if you've been working 15 years but you have no work to show for it, I'm probably not going to hire you, but if you have no professional experience, but you have an amazing portfolio of all this uh, just like boundary pushing work, I will definitely want to hire you. So have a website or a GitHub link, someplace where you can showcase the work that you've done, have a resume, and then start applying for jobs. I definitely would say nurture connections more than trying to just cold call. Definitely go to job boards and send out resumes, but you're more likely to get a job from someone that you've been able to nurture a relationship with, ask people out to coffee, and as long as you're showing people that you're interested in them and you want to hear their story, people love to talk about themselves. They would love to talk to you about how they got to be, you know, working at Google, things like that. People love being able to tell those stories. Other than that, try and find wherever you live a more localized or specific job board. So like Monster and Indeed, they're so flooded with so many different applications, it's just white noise. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, here in Denver, we have the Denver, Denver Egotist, which is specifically ad agency tech jobs. Uh, if you wanted to work in that specific market, we've built in Colorado, which is uh, Colorado based companies that mm -hmm. have started here. So there's all sorts of different subsets of that. And then I would say go to meetups and meet people, talk to other developers, talk to designers, see where they're working, the kind of work they're doing and go from there. That's going to be a lot more uh, functional than just shotgunning out your resume to every opening you see. Fair enough. So it's at the end of the day, even though the job is behind the computer, getting the job might be more Absolutely. of a personal exchange. Yeah. There's a lot of people who can develop and design, but uh, we don't always want to work with all those people. And I think being able to show that you're, I mean, we're really past these days of the basement dwelling nerd who just, he can't talk to anyone, but it's fine. He'll just go down there and type. It's not like that anymore. You have to be able to be sociable. You have to be able to talk to clients. Um, that's a really important skill now. So being able to get out there and make an impression is super important. Yeah, because at the end of the day, um, you will have to be interacting with, like you said, clients yeah. or designers. If, for example, if you're yeah. working with a UX designer and you'd, be, you'd have to be able to communicate. Yeah what it is you're planning to build. I actually polled some of my friends in the industry and I said, would you rather work with a mean dev who is super smart mm -hmm. or a uh, dev that was not very smart or still learning uh, but was really nice? And hands down they said, oh, I would rather work with a nice developer. I can help them learn, I can teach them, but you can't fix a mean person <laughs> basically. Enough. So yeah, be nice. Be nice, don't be mean, and network. <laughs> exactly. There yeah. you go. Thank you so much. This has been so welcome. super, super informative. I'm glad. I hope that you guys, if you're planning to get into the industry now, know where to start. Yeah. Same. Thank you. All right. You're so welcome. I hope you've enjoyed that video and that you found it useful and interesting and that you've learned new stuff. If you want to learn more about front end, I have a playlist uh, with all of my content about front end there and also make sure to subscribe to my channel to my instagram to my newsletter because there will be more resources and good stuff coming your way and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below or on instagram have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing bye